guys welcome back uh, I've actually decided to do some work indoors um, I usually don't like to <laughs> bring it down the stairs because of its weight but um, um, it's been like a high of zero today and snowing in certain parts of Ontario in Canada which is a bit of a joke for this time of year but uh, anyway I decided to bring it in and I found out that when the tires are wet you don't want to bring it down the stairs because Normally, I put the front brake on so I could sort of like creep it down the stairs. It decided to launch itself down the stairs and nearly smashed in the wall on the bottom, but I managed to stop it just before that. So, note to self do not bring it down the stairs with wet tires. Anyway, um, what we're going to do today is something people pretty much neglect is uh, I desperately need to redo my brakes. Um, I went and picked these up dirt cheap. I got four sets for, I believe, $26, which is next to nothing when it comes to brake discs. These aren't bad looking. I would have been happy if they were just um, just a plain disc, but it looks like it's got like little chunks of um, copper in there. So, yeah, they might actually last a little bit longer than the other ones. So we're going to try and see if these will fit. Um, when I bought them, they were kind of vague on what uh, models they fit. Didn't say anything about Zoom. I'm just basically going by the hook on the end and the, um, the little loop on the other end. They look the same so we'll find out. Also what I need to do is I need to put a switch on the um, controller so I can kill one controller and have the other one working only. Um, I'm not going to rewire the battery pack for there. It's actually wired up to find the way it is. Um, what I would like to do is be able to put that pack on and this pack on and just have something where I could switch from pack to pack um, at the moment if I was to plug everything in obviously I'd blow this one up so I don't know I'm kind of up in the air with how I want to rewire this uh, like I said I would like to do it where I have all the batteries and just flick a switch when one battery conks out that way I don't have to stop get off the bike and plug it in but I'll probably end up leaving it like that for now. Uh, we're going to put a switch on here to turn this, well the one's 49 volts for the front and this one is 36 volt for the rear uh, but they both run at um, 75 volts. This one just runs a little hotter. <laughs> um, one of the issues I am having with the 49 volt one is at full rate of speed or full speed like full throttle um, it kicks out, which is really, really it's weird. It's like almost as if uh, the battery is dropping to like cut off, and then it kicks back in, and then it kicks out, kicks back in. The bike's jerking like crazy. Um, I still haven't figured out what it is. Um, if it's maybe a throttle issue with the five bolts going to the hull, or what. But I've been watching the voltmeter when I've been riding, and it's jerking around. It's not dropping to below whatever fifty-one or 43 volts or whatever it is that would make that controller cut off so I don't know so trying to figure that out that's something that's been uh, buried in this uh, this build for a while but uh, anyway I'm gonna take you with me and we're gonna go over the brakes and what I do anyway yeah besides the issues that the bikes having now with the brakes and everything else it's uh it actually feels and rides like one of those stand-up scooters it's uh, definitely got the torque for it anyway um, let's take one of these apart and see if these uh, brake pads even fit. I'm uh, hoping they do because I'm in desperate need of new pads. Hopefully you can see that. Now these brakes are actually pretty special. Um, I installed these last year and they're actually full of scented baby oil. <laughs> I'm just, just curious to see how long they would last before they went to fail. They started to fail. And they've actually lasted quite a while. I haven't had an issue with them yet. I even took the uh, old, well, a couple of days ago I took them apart and uh, cleaned them up. They get a lot of buildup of um, brake pad material on the outside after about a week of riding. Which is not surprising. This is a long bike, so it's a little bit heavier than the standard bike. <laughs> it takes more to stop it. But uh, one thing I do check, see, these were recently cleaned, like couple of days ago and they're already filthy um, one thing I do check is to make sure both of the cylinders are moving 
I believe it was on the back one when I took it apart. One of them was on angle and it wasn't pushing out. But I mean, they're zoom brakes, so they're not high end by any means. But uh, they got to be safe, right? Just got to take the clip off. Um, okay, it's just the one here. I like the ease of uh, servicing these brakes. You just basically slide the brake pads out. Of course, now it's going to make it a pain in the butt. Yeah, you just slide it out like that. And that is all. And as you can see, these ones were due. They're glazed. Uh, there's a huge ridge uh, where it's worn down. And they're like paper thin. Oh, man, this one's even worse. Look at that. I might have to readjust that brake. I don't think it's sitting properly on the um, the pad or the, on the uh, disc itself because you can see that it's uh, missing a lot of brake pad there. Anyway, let's get the new one and see if these actually fit. They look the same. I'm hoping they fit. I'll uh, leave the link in the description if you have zoom brakes that, uh, and you're looking for some cheap pads. I'd like to actually buy some more because they go through a lot of them. And one thing you don't want to do is touch the pads with your hands because you're contaminating them. And the other thing we're going to do before we even put these on is we're going to quickly wipe the disc down in case there's any oil or grease or anything on it. I use this stuff here, alcohol swabs. This way I don't have to um, have a container of rubbing alcohol laying around. Just give them a quick wipe down. And as you can see, they're pretty filthy. And that's all it takes. All right, let's quickly clean this, clean this up. Quick wipe down. Now I've already checked the both, uh, both the uh, things pop out when you. Uh, you can easily check just by putting your finger in there and give it a squeeze. And so you can see they're both moving. So there's nothing seized. This clip keeps them apart. I believe it goes like this. You can see that. This one goes like that. And then you just basically slide it in. The cotter pin goes through the uh, loop side there. Wow, I lucked out. I literally just basically saw a picture of them. I'm like, ah, they'll probably fit. I didn't even check the model number. But uh, they work. <laughs> Bit of a pain to put in though, because they're new and thick pads on it. Wow, I really did luck out. Not normally how you do brakes, but it's, I got new name brakes off of Amazon. They're just like your Zoom. There's nothing special about them, and they're a bit of a pain to find parts for. Cotter pin. It's not going to move. Good enough. And we 
should be able to just slide her back on. There's a gap there. Not much of one, that's for sure. A clean screwdriver would probably help us out here. Uh, give me a minute to find something. Yeah, these are definitely going to uh, rub for a bit. They are tight, which I'm not complaining about. Uh, so, like, what I do now is I have to put these spacers in because if I don't, the um, the disc will or the pad will actually rub on each finger here and uh, make massive clicking sounds. So I managed to figure out how to get rid of that. Now what I like to do is just squeeze the um, the caliper as I'm tightening them up because what that does is it's, it's uh, both of these uh, cylinders are closed at the same time and it sort of centers it when you're tightening them uh, tightening up the bolts and then when you let go it uh, it just saves it from trying to uh, center it out. One thing I do want to pick up is a torch torque wrench. I just give it a little little twist just to tighten it up. And that's it. Wow, what a difference on the on the handle part. Let's try it out. Oh my god. Those brakes are so smooth. Yeah, I definitely need new pads. Cool. Well, I'll basically do the back now. And uh, I'll just repeat. So that's the, pretty much the easy way to do it without a shop. And uh, I think these pads are going to last a while. Just going to do the backs. Well, that's the rear done. If I play my cards right, I probably won't have to do this again until next year. I can save the other set because I got such a good deal on them. But uh, you can see there's a hell of a lot of use in them. And this one here is pretty much down to the nub. Not much left of that one. It also had an issue with the holder was snapped off and it was rubbing. You can see the other fingers missing. Uh, these were the original ones that came with the brake pads from Amazon. So they lasted quite a bit considering what they've been through. Doing 60 coming to a complete stop. The brakes on the bike now are like, they have been like that for a while. You just, there's barely any travel on the, on the levers obviously because there's so much pad now. And um, other one of them squeal. It just comes to a complete stop almost instantly. So it's way better. Anyway, let's get that wiring. See if we can't um, just put a small toggle switch or something on it for now. Just to um, be able to kill one motor so we can use the smaller pack. Now I do remember running into a small toggle switch about a week ago that I saved. I think I threw it in here. Got a lot of stuff that's been here for a while, like this this uh, light bulb voltmeter. I don't think they sell that anymore at uh, Hobby King. Still got this one from when I bought it. That one's pretty old. Been through hell and back. Still works. And obviously these ones here still work. And get distracted here. We're in here for a switch. Thunderbolt caps, saving those from the project. Oh, what did I do with the switch? Give me a minute to find it. Now, if you can hear the noise in the background, that is the heater, believe it or not. Not the air conditioning. The air conditioning was last week. <laughs> and uh, tell me that isn't global warming, guys. I mean, we have break. Never had weather like this. It's warm by now. Alright. We get the wires prepped. So this is this is the wire going to the other throttle on the other controller. And this is the throttle for this controller. 
right here on the whites. So we're basically we're just gonna instead of having those connected, we're just basically gonna put the switch right there and we'll click it off and on. It can get easier than that. Not technical at all. Now eventually, uh, like I said, I'd like to make some kind of relay or something. If I can't find the problem with the the um, controller cutting off at high speed, I'm gonna probably end up ordering two more controllers at the same rate, same same voltage, and same make. And uh, it might it won't. Well, I'm not going to. It's going. It's going to get rid of the problem. So. Solder here. Now, one thing I don't have anything long enough to reach the bike, so. I gotta quickly butter up those wires, so I'll unplug this, it's still hot. Go. And then we'll quickly give it a chance to heat back up. White in the center. We can get it on there. there we go. The black on the side. Oh, where'd it go? Great, I just lost it. Didn't hear it hit the floor. Give me a minute to find it. <laughs> oh, forget this. This one is way too sensitive to heat. Uh, it doesn't even flip flip right now. But as soon as I heated the uh, middle pin up to put the wire on, it, um, it started to melt. And I can't take much heat. So let's see if we can find another toggle switch laying around here. Let's see what we can do. I found this one here. It's pretty direct. <laughs> on and off. Um, we should actually check to see if it actually works before I'm soldering it on. Pretty sure that's just me, it's not the switch. Yeah, it's solid. Cool. We'll use this one. Not like you're going to miss it. Just adding a little solder to the pins so the wires stick better. This one can take the heat. Cool. That. Nothing too pretty. <laughs> it's not like a hidden switch or anything. You're gonna notice it. Just run a little tape around that. On off. That will do. Sweet. Let's try it out. Best part about <laughs> working on the bike now is I can just use that small pack. I don't have to throw my big ass batteries on it. Uh, just grab this one. It powers up right away. Uh, the other thing I had to fix is my computer, but I'm not worried about that right now. 
I went to um, push the bike over and the USB uh, plug that was sticking up the side of the box broke off and uh, inside the uh, inside my computer there so I'll have to fix that but as it stands right now I should be able to pick it up and give it some gas okay so that was just the front now if I switch this flick, flick the switch I should have both yep cool okay so the switch works so this way I might uh, actually try this pack with both batteries and see uh, how it uh, reacts to that or both motors I mean sorry but that's it um, like I said I'll put some tape around that make it nice and neat tuck it in but uh, at least now I can disable one motor um, I got this three speed switch back up here for obviously for speed and what else I ended up disabling the um, the pass sensor uh, one issue I have is with that controller sometimes it forgets that I pulled the lever on the switch um, the switch on the lever I mean and if you're pedaling it'll try and take off even when you're putting the brake on so I disabled it for now well that's about it guys um, like I said when the weather gets better and I can get that battery charged up I'll do some more extensive, more more testing I'm kind of curious to see what I can actually put it through uh, if I if it doesn't even get warm and I can use both motors at the same time I will but uh, we'll see how it goes I'll spend the rest of the night tucking in my wire have a good one.